Hey everyone, Fuseman coming at ya. Of late, I've been spending a lot of time looking at Chainlink and how it could really be utilized when it comes to blockchain and gaming. Honestly, I feel like I'm just scratching the surface and in this video, I just wanna give a broad overview of the project and how I think it's really necessary when it comes to GameFi and play to earn games. As I spend more time looking at Chainlink and all of the different functionality it offers, and as that project, I think, continues to grow, I'll likely have to make follow-up videos that, that go in and I digest those different aspects of the project. I just wanna give a very high-level overview of the problems that the Chainlink project is trying to solve and how that correlates to play to earn and if you're looking into building those types of games, how you could think about taking advantage of Chainlink. As always, if you have any questions, definitely let me know down in the comments below or head over to Discord to chat with the rest of the community. So first things first, what is Chainlink? Chainlink is a project that's been around for quite a few years now. It's solving what is commonly referred to as the Oracle problem in the blockchain space. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time diving into that because I think there's a lot of really good articles and videos out there explaining it. But in just a quick summary, the Oracle problem boils down to the fact that blockchains by nature are intended to be deterministic, that basically from block zero all the way up to the latest block on the blockchain, you should be able to replay every transaction and get the exact same result as anyone else on the chain. But if you want to introduce external APIs, that's when you start running into issues with external data that could constantly and dynamically change, impacting that determinism that happens when you're replaying blocks. So you have this incompatibility in a sense, right, between the blockchain and any up API data that you would, would want to bring in. This could be some, some something as simple as weather, it could be something as complicated as price from a specific, say, uh, exchange, um, or it could be something related to your game and your own API, right? Um, any of those are, I think, relevant use cases where you would want to interact with external data and bring that into the blockchain. And there's no really easy way to do that without kind of a middle layer, which is what Chainlink is providing. What Chainlink will do is basically act as that middle layer between you and the blockchain. It will go ahead and call your API on your behalf submit it to the blockchain as a verified transaction, and then your smart contract in Solidity would be able to pull in that data and use it for whatever purposes it wants via callback. And it's kind of in that kind of two-step motion that Chainlink is able to securely provide a means to allow you to interact with the blockchain while still providing that determinism that you need with the blockchain. And moreover, Chainlink acts as a decentralized network so that you don't have any centralized failure points in this middleware that, that could, say, corrupt the system. That's what Chainlink is in, in a nutshell, and I, I think I grossly oversimplified it, but hopefully it, it helps to paint a picture of what the problem is and how it is being solved. So how does that relate to blockchain gaming or GameFi or play to earn games. Fundamentally, I think if, if we break this down into you have external data about your game that you would like to bring onto the blockchain, that's really where Chainlink operates, right? If I want to say, have a marketplace of prices, say hypothetically in my game, and I want that to be exposed on, this, on the blockchain, I could do that. If I want to have anything associated with my player, say their their avatar or say their level or say whether or not they've interacted with somebody right within my game and i need to expose that as an api to the blockchain i can do that that's that that's high level right where where you might start to see connections between a game and the blockchain moreover one of the, the key components to most games is randomness getting randomness to work with determinism is a very tricky challenge. Chainlink solves that with some of their randomness, verifiable randomness functions, which will allow you to go ahead and run a random function on one of the Chainlink nodes, submit that to the blockchain, and then that acts as your random number to provide still determinism within the blockchain. So you have all of these different use cases where randomness, where you could just want APIs, or just broadly allowing the blockchain to read the state of your metaverse, that 
wouldn't wouldn't be possible otherwise with Chainlink. And I, I feel like that's just scratching the surface here of what's really possible. And it's done in, I think, honestly, I, I feel like such a simple way. Like if we're, if we're looking technically at what you have to do to integrate with Chainlink, I think the documentation does a great job of explaining that step by step in that you can really easily just go ahead, call the Chainlink function, call the specific API. This could be a kind of predefined API that Chainlink has access to. It could be your own external API. Say hypothetically, you wanna call the Fuse VR Crypto APIs, let's say to get a list of NFTs, right? Associated with a given user. Chainlink is gonna allow you to do that and then get that callback, receive that data and act upon that based on what say what NFTs a user actually owns, which is actually something that's a little hard to do within a smart contract as, as far as kind of integrations go. That's conceptually what you would want to do to start working with Chainlink. I think when it comes to NFTs, that's really where I see a lot of value in, in leveraging Chainlink. Because today, for, for all practical purposes, most NFT data is stored off chain. It's done in, in my opinion, in a pretty clunky way where you're calling a JSON API, that API is hosted on a centralized server, that server may or may not exist at any given point in time. That could lead to a lot of questions of authenticity when it comes to NFTs. Chainlink can hopefully act as that middleware to, to help solve that, especially if you're looking at cases where the data of an NFT is pretty dynamic. So for example, if I have a sword, right, in, in my game as an asset, and I wanna level it up and, and continually evolve that, right? Chainlink can act as that bridge in a sense to, to merge and call, say, APIs associated with my game, get that metadata and serve that into my NFT asset to do whatever I like with that. Say if that's, for example, merging different assets together, whether that be uh, burning different assets or just whether that be evolving based on given criterias of, of the, the actual asset itself. In my mind, I think a lot of these ideas are still pretty early and I'm still trying to digest what that actually means conceptually. I think it's kind of a critical component to where we are kind of as an industry and that a lot of people are thinking about games and NFTs and trying to bridge those two together, but there's no really clear cohesive way to do that and no clear cohesive way to easily consume that, especially when it comes to dynamic content. And I think Chainlink to me can act as that 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 solution to help bridge the gap. I, I think there's a lot of complexity involved there, but I think it's a necessary complexity to hopefully solve some of these challenges when it comes to games. And to that end, I'd love to know down in the comments if you've been kind of thinking about how you want to integrate blockchains and play to earn games together, what are those requirements that you need to, to actually make that happen? Is Chainlink something that, that could help solve your problems or has that been something you ever looked into? Because I think there's definitely a lot of things to think about when it comes to ultimately how, how this all works together. That's my quick summary of kind of how I think all of these technologies could fit together. Again, uh, I'd love to, to know down in the comments below what, what you think of Chainlink, uh, if you've heard of it before, and how you might consider using any of the different components of Chainlink to work within Unity, within your, your games, within your applications, because I, I think all of this thinking and thought discussion is all completely pretty early on, and I think we're at the forefront of really discovering how all this fits together and how it can be used to deliver a lot of value. Would love to hear that down in the comments below, but otherwise I'm gonna wrap this up for now. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. It's been Fuse Man and I'm signing out.